uh, the atmosphere and the confidence of people. And I think this is exactly what the team itself needed in terms of uh, boosting confidence and what the country needed uh, in terms of uh, their own feet, their own attitude towards the team. I think this has given many people uh, a very good understanding into what this team is capable at the competition. I think people's attitudes will now be moving away from we are going to get beating and embarrassed at the competition to, okay, maybe we stand a chance. And I think that is exactly what you need going into. Um, you know, where we have often, uh, where we've often been in, in, in situations where we go into the competition. And we feel confident. Even in 2006, during our debut, we felt confident. Uh, even at our debut, 2010, we really felt confident we could get out of the Even 2014, we had a really good team going into the competition, beating Egypt 6-1 to qualify. But this didn't have that uh, going into the competition because we really had any proper statesman performance. Um, but this was it. And the, the thing that we beat a tough Iran team at Kudu Ahmed and Thomas Partey at players. Um, it's even more impressive. And I think this gives a glimpse into how Ado could line up in that game against Portugal. First of all, the defensive line. A lot of people had concerns about Alisus completely disrupting the uh, partnership that was built between part, uh, sorry, Amati yep. and Zenda Jaku. Yeah. He's coming and he's shown he can always get better. Uh, I think sometimes we get a bit too comfortable with what we are used to. So everybody thought, okay, the partnership between Amase and Jiku uh, is gone, it's developed over the years, they have a good understanding. Why do you disrupt that by bringing in Salusu? But the quality will always shine through. And if you have uh, a player that is probably on an individual level better than those two, and you come and partner him with one of those two, you see a lift and upgrade. And I think. That is what we saw today. Salisu uh, also showed us something different. Aerially, he's also very good. Scored a good header. I don't remember the last time we did that. Uh, so we have to have that threat from set pieces as well. Uh, so it's good to see that he doesn't only bring defensive solidity or a good reading of the game, which is the best trait that he has. Uh, no wonder last season he had the best interceptions in the Premier League. He can see danger. He can smell danger from Tamale. Uh, you know, so he is... We needed that, and Salisu has shown that he deserves to start. Whether you're going with a back three or a back two, he is that guy uh, that we can depend on. Again, Baba Rahman, someone mentioned it, and I'm glad the person did, because the last time I tweeted support for Baba Rahman and said that he was unfairly targeted, I got abuse you know, from most people. Some people said I collected money. I don't even have a personal relationship with him. But I insist that Baba Rahman has been very unfairly targeted. You know, by many people. Today, he showed against Shakiri, against uh, Breeze in Ball, quite cool players in that team, that is capable, you know, Baba Rahman. And, you know, he is one player that has given support to this national team from the very moment he walked into this team. And maybe there, there have been moments where he hasn't exactly been stellar. Tonight, or this afternoon, he showed exactly why many coaches continue to rely on him and to do well at the competition we will need a player like him he did really well to um, as well so i'm impressed the midfield again another where we you know not that he's trying to take credit for it the noise that we made for salis i think one that watched the game today would not understand why we all want him in the team because many people don't watch the french uh, and so every time you mention salis Almost as if it's an arbitrary uh, support for the player. When we criticized and said that Baba Idrisu's distribution wasn't exactly great, you know, some people didn't understand. Now you see someone like Salis coming, and suddenly you understand why people who have watched this guy play think that this guy is an excellent footballer. And in that position, brilliant. Elasio Wusu, I think we saw in the second half against Nigeria that what he's capable of. But I think that those second half substitutions from players that he brought in, they brought something completely different to this team. Semenyo is quick. 
Uh, he is powerful, and it, it's a really good option that we have in the you know, goals in terms for that attacking athlete. Because so far we've seen that in the first half, Inaki is still struggling to get a good grasp of his teammates, a good understanding of the players that he he was still making runs. He was being found by players like Jordi. Um, Semenyo looks a bit more dangerous in my in my opinion, uh, judging by that second half performance. And we've been also quite in the form of Kamaldi's man, you know, not really had a consistent run of good games for the Black Stars. He underwhelmed at the AFCON too. So he showed again but uh, yeah, this morning he showed again what he's capable of. Uh, Kamaldi is Suleiman. And perhaps some people can now begin to understand why the coach would maybe pick him over pencil. Uh, you know. So I think overall, like I said, we saw a lot of positive things in this team. We still saw Remina Old Guard first up, Jordan Gold. Uh, Andre, you, I was upset that long, given his age and given uh, his his have to be mapped. Um, so that was a bit of a surprise. And in the first half, like I said, remnants of the old team and all of that. Um, some players holding on the ball a bit too much. Uh, and also not finding the right passes when players make the run. So that can be frustrating. Second, we were a bit more direct. And I think you don't necessarily always have to play, uh, you know, excellently in terms of possession. But we have to be more efficient and more direct and let the opposition think twice a pouring men forward. That's what, what we did in the second half. Because every time we had the ball, we were very purposeful. And we haven't seen that from the ball in a long time. And my last one would just be on Tre. Goodness. I think that there is no way that anybody would tell me that Skovitre should not be starting every single match for the Black Stars. He is the best we have at controlling the game. His reading of the game his calmness on the ball and his ability on the set pieces. We don't have a midfielder of his profile in this team. And that's why, in my opinion, when we come up against Portugal, the midfield three should definitely be Salis, sitting, surrounded by Partey, and then, could, uh, and then sorry, surrounded by Partey, uh, and then Daniel Kofitre, that midfield three against whether it's Cavalio, Bernardo Silva, Bruno Fernandes, or whether they bench Cavalio and bring in Vitinha, Bruno Fernandes, and Bernardo Silva, we will have a battle on our hands. Uh, and for me, so I think that um, Otuado did himself a world of good with those second half changes, with the new players he brought in. The players themselves showed a bit of hunger. Um, and overall, I have been very impressed. And I think that we needed this, like I said at the start. The atmosphere around the team will change. There'll be a positive team. Uh, we need this. We needed this. Uh, I always say that positive vibes with with positive vibes come positive performances because of the the attitude towards the team. There's a lot of negativity. This performance will change a lot of minds. It, it will draw a lot of people towards the team, and people will be a bit more expectant. And when they are like that, then they can begin to cheer the team on. And I think that uh, if we train one more week, we have exactly uh, six days to the next game. The team flies tomorrow to go to our train for five more days. Come next day against Portugal, uh, we should have a battle on our hands. Primarily, what is key from everything that we saw today is team selection. If Otuado picks the right team, I think we'll be competitive. Uh, sure. Gary is here. He wants to add a few things. Yeah. I don't want to go through the trouble of... Uh, Gary, Gary, Gary. Logan. Welcome. What's up, what's up, what's up? So, first Gary, of all... Share um, your mind. Could I, could I welcome all the thousand-something people on the space? I was just ask, about to do that. And guys, to um, share the link, please, you know, so that people can join this space. We want to get as many of your opinions as possible. Charlie, it's a good day. Not every day blasting the team, you know. There's more room for improvement, but let's give Otuado his flowers today. I mean, when I saw the lineup, I was like, I mean, you saw what I tweeted. I said, the lineup looks new. You know, how many of us would have had the cajones, the balls, to start a free banner today? 
raise your hands up, you know, if, if you would have been able to do that or would have said it. The guy spotted something. He did it. Banya played how many minutes, friends? Banya played how many minutes, Joel? I think he was close to 70 minutes. Let me quickly check. Yeah, close to 17 minutes. Charlotte to give him that run and for the boy to... And I was asking him on our... On our um, when we went on halftime, we invited calls and everybody kept mentioning him. And I asked one lady, will she start Banier or think about starting Banier based on the evidence of what we saw today? So Joel, I, 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 it is something that I want you to ask the, 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 the good people listening as well. Has Banier forced Otuado to think of him as an option to... Well, on the right side, right? Who? Yeah. Fat, uh, Fatal is a haku. Fatal is a yeah. haku. Or Kamau. Or Kamau. You know, Kamau Suwa just got himself a big headache. Or even Jordan. Yeah. Or even yeah. Jordan. Because, because Jordan see, the thing is, everybody, every coach in the world can watch a hundred Jordan IU clips right now and know exactly what you do. They should go and find a free Ebanias Ghana Premier League clips. To go and find a few years back, the Ghana Premier League clips. That is the wild card that you need in a tournament sometimes. Like, they have no idea what Banier can do, except for maybe this one game. And by the time they get to know, oh, Romadico, you know, the surprise element is there. So, and I have a feeling, several people have also said that this may be the good thing, the good thing about this Ghana team. You don't know how um, Salis plays for the Black Stars. You don't know how Elisha Usu plays for the Black Stars. You've not seen, uh, uh, what's his name? Salisu Amate combined before. You don't know they play to uh, Barbara Man. You have an idea of their passing combinations. And up till yesterday, I was recording a podcast and I was uh, telling the person, asking that. me, yesterday morning, six starting 11s yeah. for the Black Stars. Six. I did six starting 11s for the Black Stars. And so I can't tell you who, what, who is going to start. The people who are in the most trouble right now are the coaches of Uruguay, South Korea, and Portugal. They are crapping themselves because they have no idea what we are going to do. Even we, the fans and the journalists, we don't know. Yeah. Which is maybe a good thing. Tale, thanks, guys. Uh, the only one other thing... Guys, guy, before I'm you go... Sure. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. Let me just quickly... He's here, he's here. Yeah. yeah. So, Gary, you noticed something about a free Banya, whether Ghana Premier League or even today's game with the Black Stars, the runs, yeah. which we saw multiple times in the build-up play. Do you think that could yeah. play uh, a major uh, role when it comes to we playing teams like, um, let's say, teams that would like to play the high line? Of course, of course, of course. It's something that Inaki did in the Brazil game and got frustrated in, in, the, in the games that he featured in. And today we saw it once more. The guys are not picking his runs. You know, they are not on the same wavelength with him yet. But for some reason, within the first five minutes or so, Jordan had tried twice. And one particularly one, particular one was very good. Where from the left, he just looked free and make the run. And spreaded the ball through about four or five people. That time, Banya didn't get the pass. But if he can do that in three training sessions with these guys, it might be a possibility. That's one way to know how... He likes to play. He doesn't like to hug the tuck line. He will have he will tuck in as an sort of auxiliary number seven and a half, you know, eight and a half, not exactly nine kind of player. And it's a good option to have, you know. So let's keep at it and good luck to them next week. Great performance. Wonderful. I think the, uh, the only yeah, well, the only other thing I would just add before you bring other people in is uh Tariq Lamte. I don't know what you made of his performance, but I feel like that right side, we have three right backs in the team. Dennis Odi, Klamte, Ali Duseidu. And I just have the feeling that today, I mean, he was okay, but he wasn't exactly stellar, um, in my opinion. And that's, I feel, and I know the coaches really, really like Ali Duseidu. So he looks like, He's playing himself into that number one starting position, a right back, Ali Dusey. The case is the second half play much. The games we have seen him play previously, he has been absolutely brilliant. And the ones that are playing ahead of him so far, having exactly shown that they are much better, especially in the national. So we'll see what Otuado does against Portugal. But overall, impressive. 
Um, but thank you. Speaking of the Tyreek issue, I, I noticed something with Ghana at the World Cup. Most of the time, we need people with the ability to cross, uh, give quality crosses. And that's one thing I think I, I, I really think Tyreek brings to the team. His, his quality um, in placing or playing the ball, striking the ball is really good. So um, I, I don't know about you, but I think that could be one factor. Because among the right backs, yes, then also Doe can definitely give that. But Tyreek, we know with the Premier League what he does. In fact, let me even throw this question to Felix. Felix, uh, welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. With, with Tyreek and getting him to put in quality crosses, we, we well, I don't know about our ability in the air. We have the DRU, I've not seen Inaki, but could we use that? us uh, one of the things to our advantage because yes i know tyree has the ability but we've not seen it yet do you think it could it could possibly come to play in the near future maybe at the world cup oh yes it could um today he put in two or three crosses or so which created some panic within the swiss penalty area and so that is a quality that we can always rely on but friends has a point when he speaks about growing competition on the right hand side of our defense um, I have a sneaky suspicion that the coach will repose confidence in Dennis Odoi because he brings a lot to the team. He brings vast experience. He's a bit better defensively than uh, Tariq. Tariq is better offensively. So a balance has to be struck between the two. Uh, whether we want more offensive play from our right back or we want more defensive acumen. That is a riddle that the coach has to resolve. But overall, it, it was a very good good performance and i believe that we were able to put out this showing because of defensive solidity our two center backs were very composed very calm uh, many people forget that the team we just played is a very good team the swiss team they're a very 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 good team right from the euros they have proven that they have the ability to beat any team in the world they put yeah. france to the sword i watched they, them they beat spain they beat, I watched them uh, beat Portugal. Spain. They ran speed ragged, Spain ragged. They beat Portugal. They beat Serbia. Sorry, Czech Republic. Czech Republic. So yeah. it, they are no pushovers. And for yeah. us to subdue them in this manner, it speaks a lot about the sort of improvements that we have witnessed in this team. Uh, big, 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 big statements by Salis and Elisha Usu. I think that, like Fen said, they were those two were wildcats. They, I'm, I'm sure Gadisaka was expecting to play against Pate. Then he came up against Salis and Elisha Usu, who I doubt he has said really he has said much about and did not know what to do. And those two completely buzzed the midfield. They made it impossible for the Swiss, who are used to very intricate quick passing, to see much of the ball. They supported the defense, they tracked back. And their most endearing quality is their passing. Normally you would expect num number tens to be threading those passes. But both Shre and Salis have very good passing range. And so they were able to find attackers as and when they wanted. And that puts quite some pressure on the Swiss um, defense. I also think that um, Semenyor was a revelation. His, his strength, his composure, and how deadly he is came to play. This perhaps has to be Kamadi Suleiman's most telling contribution yet to a blast as much. Within minutes of coming on, he was creating headaches for the Swiss right back. And it was little wonder that he managed to whisk past a Swiss defender and set up uh, Semenyo's um, goal. I also saw something about Kamas, which I really liked. Indeed, the clearest chance we had, it is true that we had scored two goals at the time, but the clearest chance we had was a pass that he threaded to Kamadin Suleimana. Unfortunately, he missed. But that quality to pick the pass and time the attackers run is something that had been missing uh, in the first half. I would have liked to see him do that when Inaki was on the field to see how 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 they gel. So that is something that we also need to watch. Um, the day are you putting a decent shift? I remember his his most remarkable contribution was a clearance that he made just on the edge of our eighteen our penalty area when the Swiss had a quick break. That was good, but I suspect that. He was a bit lacking in stamina, despite the effort that he made. Jordan was also okay. 
he managed to create space for himself in the first half and he took a shot which was rather feeble but the very idea that he was able to create that space is sufficient testimony about what he brings to this team so overall it was a good performance it was a composed performance against a very very good side now it is true that this, this is i beg your pardon this is true that this is only a friendly match so perhaps we should not get ahead of ourselves but it is a performance that one cannot ignore i am sure that the coaches of the teams in our group have taken notes and if in the past they underestimated us they will be revising their notes because this is a massive improvement especially when uh, there was no party there was no kudus and a couple of players in the team for us to be able to put up this performance it shows that we can give the teams in our group a good run for their money